Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, we are uh, excited and elated that the Lord has blessed us with another day for us to get into the word. And so we have been on this uh, Bible study series uh, talking about balance. And so what I want to do is uh, jump into this word uh, after a word of prayer so that we can talk about balance. Uh, I, I hope you have enjoyed uh, the last two weeks of this series where we're talking about uh, how you should balance your life. Uh, the first week we talked about um, your first priority should be of the Lord is seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added. We have our focus on the things instead of the God of the things. Uh, and if we do what God has called us to do, then we will um, uh, we would get the things that we are searching for. So what God is saying on, uh, the, uh, the next week we talked about, um, Jesus, uh, uh, taking a break. And so he, he, it was a part of his priority and a part of him having uh balance in his life is that the Bible said that he often would go away, uh, to pray that he, we talked to from the scripture where he, uh, constrains the disciples and, uh, pushes away the crowd and goes up to the mountain to pray. And so we were talking about how he made himself a, a priority and how he made sure uh, that he um, took time out to himself. So my my um, my mission last week was to uh, encourage everyone to try their best to take time for themselves. Take a break before you break. Uh, was the overall message. Uh, so you wanted to make sure to put yourself in the, 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 the pie chart that I was talking about, making sure that you are a priority. So um, this week, I want to talk about what's the next thing in line? What does God tell us is the next thing in line? The first thing we talked about was God. The second thing we talked about was ourselves. So the third thing we're going to talk about is our family. Uh, and, and a lot of people think that uh, the church would probably be uh, the next thing in line. No, it's not the church. It's about your family. Uh, God is looking for you to have a better relationship with your family and minister to your family uh, more than ministering at the church and doing rituals at the church, um, uh, uh, religious things at the church. God is looking for you uh, uh, to uh, minister uh, ministry starts at home. He wants you to minister to your, your your wife and your kids, your your husband and your kids. He he's looking for you to be pleasing unto him by pleasing your family. And so uh, we're going to go to scripture because this is Bible study. So I want to make sure that we're looking at scripture. We're going to First Corinthians chapter seven, and we're going to start with verse thirty-two. Uh, so I want you to jump into that particular scripture. I have it up here on the screen for you. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 32 is where we're starting. And so the Bible says in the New Living Translation, uh, this is coming from the Apostle Paul breaking down the things that he's instructing them about life and about living with a wife and a husband that you shouldn't restrain each other from each other and one person's body belongs to others, submit to one another. He's he's given all that background. So read the entire chapter seven in at your own leisure. But for today, we're going to use as a springboard for what we're talking about. Uh, First Corinthians chapter seven, starting with verse 32. So in the New Living Translation, what you will find is that he says, I want you to be free from the concerns of this life. I want you to be free from the concerns of this life. An unmarried man can spend his time doing the work, the Lord's work and thinking of how to please him. I need y'all to understand what he's saying. He's saying, listen, if you don't have a wife, I'm not talking about a girlfriend or fiance. He said, if you do not have a wife, he's saying that your cares, your number one priority should go back to plan A and plan B, which was lesson one and two. And when we talked about that last week, um, uh, we talked about 
making sure that God is a priority and then you are a priority. So what he's saying in this particular test, the apostle Paul is trying to uh, teach the people that you have to make sure that God is in control and God is number one and God is your number one focus. Uh, and I talked about that two weeks ago about how you should be filtering everything through God and God should be um, the one you consult about the things that you're doing in your life. And so a lot of us are 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 misdirected. And I talked about that, about going after the things instead of going after God. And we're we're misdirected because what we do is we give God this little piece of our life instead of giving God the majority of our life. Instead of instead of giving God every decision in our life, we give God the, the the small ones that we think we can't handle. Instead of asking God, you know, which job and which uh wardrobe and what, what clothes you should wear or how should you wear your facial hair or your, your hair on your head, uh we only ask God about uh mortgages and, and new cars and uh, things that we can't handle uh, or we think that we can't handle, things that are beyond our own abilities. And so what God is looking for you to do, he's saying, listen, he says, what I want you to do is be free from the concerns of this life. What are you talking about, Paul? He says, listen, you're so worried about so many different things. It kind of is an affirmation of what we talked about on the first week. He says, you're so worried about the things. He said that you are confounded. And what he says, you're in bondage to the things that you're worrying about. Uh, and, and so many of us, when you're talking about, um, when you're talking about the balance of time, so many of us are uh, so consumed with our time consuming our future, our careers, our directions. And God is saying that if you're single, watch this, if you're single, you should be filtering everything that you're doing through me. That even goes for the divorced people. This is not for, if you don't have a, 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 a spouse that you are uh, dealing with right now, what the Bible is trying to tell us through the Apostle Paul is that we should be uh, concerned about him. We should be concerned about our purpose that God has fulfilled in us, that he has placed inside of us. You should be looking, searching, fasting, asking, listening, hearing what God has to say about what purpose you have in this earth. He says your gift shall make room for you. That means everyone has been gifted. And so you have to find out what your gift in the kingdom of God is. So you want to make sure that you're focusing on the right thing so that you can be free from the bondage of not knowing. Because a lot of times, not knowing what our purpose is can put us in bondage. There's a lot of people out there that are looking for God to give them uh, some type of answer to where uh, where they should be going, what direction. You're looking for someone to validate or put a stamp of approval on what God is doing. But God says, listen, what I'm looking for you to do is spend some time with me so that you can get that stamp of approval yourself because like I said two weeks ago, once God tells you what you're supposed to do, no one will be able to uh, take that away from you. You'll know your purpose, whether you, uh, whether it's in a church or out of a church, whether it's at home or at your job or whether it's at church or wherever, uh, God will, God will confirm that thing to you and no one will be able to stop you. And so what we want to, um, let you know on today is that your focus as a single person should be on how to please a, a, a how to please God, not on how to please a future husband, not on how to please a future wife. So many people are so concerned um, on preparation, um, on preparation for what's to come. You want a husband, you want a wife. So you're so busy preparing for that, that God is saying you're not pleasing because what he's saying is your dedication to me will be the preparation you need to the dedication of the person that is going to be attached to you. And I'm saying something right there that you don't even realize that your dedication to God is going to be representation of your dedication to your spouse, the person that God sent you in your life. So you'll find out that he says, listen, I want you to focus your cares and focus your mind and focus everything that you have on me. He says, doing the work of the Lord and, and how to please him. But watch in 33, 33, it says, but a man, 
But a married man has to think about the earthly about his earthly responsibilities and how to please his wife. Uh, so you got to understand the hierarchy in this thing is God is saying it's me, then it's you, then it's your spouse. It's me, it's you, then it's your spouse. Because you can't you can't be anything to anyone else if you haven't got if you don't have, have yourself together, if you haven't gotten yourself together, you can't be anything to anyone else. So what God is saying is that I need you to make sure that you get yourself together. See, I'm trying to speak to some people out there that are looking and wanting and asking and praying for God to send them companionship. But what God is saying is, can you be a good companion to me? Would I be ready to write a divorce because you haven't spent enough time with me? You haven't given me enough of your money. You haven't spent enough money on me. You haven't spent enough time listening to me because in order to be in a successful marriage, you got to be able to listen and you got to be able to communicate. And communication is a is a backwards and forward thing. It's it's a back backwards and forth uh, a, a, a conversation. It's not just one way because what we do is we go to God when we want something from God. But how many times have, uh, have we went to God and said, God, uh, here I am. Um, what do you want from me? And so that's, that is what's translated in our relationships. When it comes to us being in a relationship, we only want what we want out of the relationship. We never go to the spouse and say, what do you want out of me? And, and so that's why God is saying it is very key and instrumental for you to make sure that you are pleasing unto me and making sure that you are dedicated to me and doing the work that I have called you to do so that when you do get married, you will have a dedication and a practice of dedication to the person that you are linked up with and connected to because what you've done is already prepared yourself by being dedicated and linked up with God. Being married to God is also showing yourself practice to be married to an individual. And so a lot of times God will tell you to do stuff that you don't want to do. And so what you'll find out is the same thing happens in marriage. We put the cart before the horse. We'll get married and then start a relationship with God. But what God is saying is while you're single, get a relationship with me so that I can show you how to have a relationship with someone else. And that's one of the biggest problems we have is that in order to have a relationship with another individual, you got to learn how to have a relationship with God because there's going to be some things that you don't want to do that God will push you into. And that's the same thing your spouse will do. They will push you into places and push you into dreams and push you into careers and they will do things and help you and, and, and push you into your admirations and things that you didn't even imagine you could do without them. But you got to do it with God first. So doing it with God will help you to do it with your spouse. He says, listen, he, he says, but a married man is to think of the earthly, of his earthly responsibilities and how to please his wife. In other words, what God is doing is giving you permission to, to take me out of the hierarchy. Uh, 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 of, of, of be, he said, what I need you to do is I need you to uh, worship me through work, through not worship. I'm sorry. The worship me through ministering to your family. I think a lot of us miss that. Uh, he says, if you want to be successful in ministering to me, because listen, you got to understand that the people that you're leaving a legacy in is the people not at the church, not the people that you're ministering to on a daily basis, but it's the people that you minister to within your own household. And so what you have to understand is that God wants you to master uh, uh, ministering to your own home. Being able to be respected and minister to the people who live up under the same roof as you. And so what God is saying is make sure that you're taking care of your household. That's how you minister to me is making sure that your household is intact. And God is looking for all of us to get to that place where we are uh, 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 ministering to our spouses. And I think, and, and this just is my humble submission, that a lot of us wouldn't be in a place of divorce if we were, uh, if we had that relationship intact with God. 
lot before we got into a relationship with another individual uh, because in, uh, if we would know how to worship uh, God and, and, and submit unto God, then we would know how to submit unto our spouses because the Bible does say submit ye one unto another. It does not just say a woman should submit to her husband. It tells us to submit one to another. It, uh, but most people only read the part where it says the woman should submit to the man. But also what I need you to understand with that text is that it's also telling you that you sh the man should uh, love his wife as Christ loved the church means he died for her. So that means your, your mission should be to cover and keep your house because your wife represents your family. And so it does not talk about the children yet because it's saying, if I can get you to take care of the wife, then I'll get you to take care of the family. That's 33, 34. Watch this. He says his interest is divided in the same way. Watch this. A woman who is no longer married or has never been married uh, can be devoted to the Lord and holy in body and in spirit. But a um, but a married woman has to think about her earthly responsibilities and how to please her husband. Watch this. What he's what he's saying is the exact same thing. He says first to the to the husband that if you're single, then your mindset should be on God and your relationship should be built up on God. Watch this. Here's the funny part about it is that he tells both of them that their relationship should be intact with him, not understanding that having a relationship with God will make both of you uh, uh, receive the signal on who you should be with. And then when you get together, it should be confirmation because if I got a relationship with God and she has a relationship with God, when I say God sent you to me, then she's going to say, yeah, you're confirmation of what God sent to me because God spoke to me and God spoke to me about you. And then when we get together, all God is doing is showing confirmation of what I was already preparing you for. And so what God is saying is that you have to make sure that when it comes to balance, that you make minister, watch this, uh, 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 if you're trying to be pleasing unto your spouse, minister unto God and let your godly uh, responsibilities trump everything else if you're single. Then when you're married, then your marital responsibilities, see, you shouldn't be at the church and your husband at home hungry. You shouldn't be at the church fixing up the church and your house is raggedy. You should be doing just as many repairs at the church than you're doing at home. You should be cooking just as many meals at home that you're cooking at the church. See, a lot of people are going to get upset uh, because it's, I'm doing the work to the no. God is saying what you need to do is minister at home first. And a lot of marriages are being broken up by the church because we're putting the church before we're putting our spouses. And that's the reason why husbands are upset with the pastor and upset with the ministry and don't want to step foot in the door because he feels like he's in competition with the church. And and I understand the dedication. I understand that you've got a hellish husband that don't, that always want to get uh, 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 some attention on Sundays. And so those are different situations where God will lead you when to do it. But there's times where God tells you to stay home and you, uh, you act as if nobody else can do what you do. And you need to stay home and tend to your husband and tend to your wife and make sure that your family is intact. Because what you'll find out is that if you die, the things that you thought couldn't get done without you will get done. They might not get done as well as you do them, but you will understand that it will still get done. See, I wish I had somebody in here that would be a witness that there's people in my life that died and it hurt me for a minute, but the work still got done. And so what you got to understand is the legacy that you are leaving is in the people that you're leading. And listen to what I said. I said the, the legacy that you're leaving is in the people that you're leading. Guess what? I'm not even leading this church. This is God's church. The people that I'm leading live at my house. And so I have to be careful because I can't pour into this church more than I pour into my family because I got to make sure that when I leave this legacy, guess what? When I leave this church, there's going to be another uh, a committee, a search committee, and they're going to come up with uh, a, another great candidate and they're going to find somebody else to replace me. But guess what? They will never replace me in my home. 
They will only have one father. My wife, hopefully, will only have one husband. <laughs> uh, but you got to understand something, y'all. There's more time to be invested in the people that find you the least replaceable versus the people who will find you the most replaceable. We spend so much time at work. When when work, they'll they'll put their money together, buy you some flowers and a plant and, and send one representative to your funeral, uh, maybe buy you a grave blanket and keep it moving. Somebody else will be in your spot before you cold in the ground. You got to be careful of doing, spending so much time on these jobs and at these churches and doing all of this stuff. And you haven't invested a lot of time in your family. You got to make sure that your family uh, don't feel like they're second seat to the church. I ain't saying second seat to God. I'm saying second seat to the church because a lot of the stuff that we do is self-inflicted. A, a, a lot of a lot of the stuff God didn't tell you to go down there and do that. God said let somebody else do it, but in your mind you thought nobody could do it like you do it. And so what God is saying is that in this season and in this time I'm trying to give you confirmation that you can sit back, take a vacation, relax, do your part and keep on moving. God will send somebody else. You'll be all right and everything in the church will be all right, the people will be all right, the job will be all right. You got to invest in the people that God has given you charge over. God gave you a wife. You better make sure that you keep her. Uh, you, God gave you a husband. You better make sure that you keep him. Uh, because if God, it gives you, if he affords you the opportunity, the blessing to have somebody to spend your life with, then you don't want to lose them because you haven't focused on them. If God can take a second seat to your spouse, then listen to the way he arranges it. He says, listen, if you are single, I'm number one then you are number two. He says, but if you are married, your spouse is number one. And I am number two. You are number three. Send a text. Listen to what he says. He says, uh, a woman who is no longer married or has never been married can be devoted to the Lord and holy in body and spirit. He says, her devotion to the Lord is practice to her devotion to her husband. He says, but a married woman has to think about her earthly responsibilities and how to please her husband. He did not say, but a married woman should still think of the Lord first and then think of her husband. The problem we have is that we're wasting all of our gas on in a day on everybody else. And by the time your family gets you, you out of gas. By the time your family get to you, you didn't spend all your energy on everybody else and they get uh, a one eighth of a father. They get one eighth of a mother. And that's why you irritated and that's why they get cussed out and that's why they get put out. That's why you uh, uh, are arguing with them. That's why you're having so many issues with them is because they're not getting all of you. They're not even getting 50% of you. Balance your time to make sure that you spend time with your children. You got to understand something. You only got 18 years to pour. You only got 18 years to pour into them. You, you, you don't have uh, a whole, uh, a whole lifetime. Because you never know. They might go to the military. They might leave you. They might go uh, uh, out of state to college. They they might marry somebody and just move out of state. You just don't know. Once they turn 18, there's nothing. Uh, you, it, it, you, the sky's the limit. You don't know where they're going. You know, And so you only have 18 years to pour into them. But sometimes we, 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 we mess with the busyness of life. And we allow the busyness of life to allow us to not spend the time that we that's necessary to pour and train up the child in the way that they should go so that when they leave, when they are old, when they depart, it will not depart out of them. And so what a lot of us have have did is did a disservice to our children working two and three jobs trying to get them clothes and presents. I said this before, but they really want your presence 
They want you to be there. They want you to pour into them. They want you, they want you at the baseball game, the basketball game, the cheerleading competition. They want you at, uh, uh, the doctor's appointment and all of those things. They, they, they want you there. And so a lot of us need to understand when it comes to prioritizing your life, God says, I've taken a second seat to your family. Now don't let that handicap you from doing anything. Well, I'm always doing something with my family. Listen, uh, that's between you and God. You know what you can do to help uh, with the church and you know what you can do to help with the Lord. Uh, there's things uh, that the Lord is telling you to do that you're ignoring and using your family as an excuse. But what I'm saying is for those of us that may need a little more balance with being at home and thinking that uh, things won't get done without you, I'm trying to I'm trying to free you. That's what the text said. I'm trying to free you. I'm freeing you from feeling like you always have to be here or freeing you from feeling like you always have to uh, uh, do the things that you do or else it won't get done. God is saying it'll get done. He said, listen, I, I've seen it myself. Uh, what others say that they won't do. We just got somebody to uh, give us a thousand dollar donation for things that the church wouldn't do. Uh, people wouldn't do it. God sent somebody else. I, I, I know God will get it done. Everything that we need, God will do. So um, I need you guys to, to understand that what God is doing in your life is he's trying to get you to balance yourself to a place where you're not uh, overexerting yourself and, and, and you're, no, you're no good to your, to your family once you get home. You need to preserve, uh, preserve some energy to spend some time with your kids. Preserve, preserve some energy to spend some time with your spouse. Spend some time with your with your husband and your wife and, and make sure that you take out some time, maybe a Friday night and say, OK, I'm just going to shut everything off. I'm not going to multitask. I'm going to spend some time with you uh, uh, playing games. I learned playing board games with my kids is is good quality time with them. Um, spending time with my wife, sitting down a movie night or sitting down, just listening and talking. Uh, you have to figure out what works with your household and what helps when it comes to. Uh, um, the quality time that they need. But what the Bible is trying to tell us here is that we have to put our family in that. It's got to be a big slice of the pie, guys. Uh, God is looking for you to put them as a big slice. You got to make sure that they uh, have been educated with everything that God has uh, imparted into you to impart into them. If you've been blessed to have a family, there's so many people who don't, if you've been blessed to have a family, the Lord blessed you with a husband, the Lord blessed you with a wife, uh, you better make sure that you're investing your time into them to make sure that everything is right with them. Okay. And so that's, that's my study. Um, uh, that's my, uh, third part, uh, this, uh, series on, on balance. Uh, if the Lord say the same, you know, we'll, we'll be in the same, uh, area next week. If not, he'll direct us in a different direction. And so I want to just encourage you, just keep us lifted in prayer. Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. We give your name glory for uh, just blessing us uh, with this Bible study lesson, uh, letting us know that uh, in the hierarchy that you have put in place, God, you have allowed us uh, to have family uh, in, in, in our, our spouses as a, a top priority. If we're going to minister, let us minister to them. God, we ask that you would just continue to keep us lifted and keep us strong as the enemy desires to sift us like wheat. But we thank you so much that you have prayed for us, oh God. And we ask right now that you would just uh, uh, give us the strength and the energy uh, to um, be more vibrant for our family, that we would uh, uh, come home um, uh, uh, more excited about being home, more, uh, excited about spending time with our family. And so God, we ask right now that we would have a better balance in our life so that everyone will get a great piece of us. And then we also can get uh peace for ourselves. So we thank you. We praise you. We give your name glory. It is in Jesus name. We pray. Amen. God bless you on today. We ask that you would continue to, uh, give to our, um, Project 2021, we are uh, rolling. We are continuously rolling with uh, the renovations and getting things done. So we are asking that you would uh, continue to um, give your donation. Like I said, a minimum of $100 over 
your tithes and offering and and so we can get these things done is i think you're going to be surprised with the changes that are being made is it looks beautiful in our sanctuary and the reason why i'm not in there now is because you know it's all uh in the ugly phase as i i, I preached on sunday we're in the ugly phase so there's a lot of stuff going on in there so i had to um uh, minister from my office and so what i want you to do is just continue to keep praying for us as we pray for you uh, and the Lord will bless, uh, will bless it. And we're going to continue to keep going. God bless you. And God keep you on today is our prayer. Love you.